morning. Uh, welcome to the seventh podcast of the Bronx Bomber blog. Uh, my name is Brian Peng, and I'm joined tonight by Chad Rains and Phil Acri. Chad, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Um, you know, just keeping up with all the yeah. off-season moves the Yankees have been making these past couple days. It's been a ride. Phil, what about you? Um, feeling good. Um, still pretty happy that uh, we got Starlin Castro last night. Uh, trade for Justin Wilson's a little bit, or trading away Justin Wilson's a little weird, but still pretty happy that Brian Cashman made a move last night. Absolutely. So let's actually get started on the trade that happened ju about two hours ago. So as you guys know, Justin Wilson, the seventh inning man for us last year, was traded to the Detroit Tigers for two minor league prospects. Luis Sessa, that's, that's how I hope that's how I pronounce the name, and Chad Green. So just to give a brief introduction of both, Sessa began the year on the Mets, and then he came to Detroit as part of the Ioannis Cespedes trade. He then pitched in AAA the rest of the year. He had a, you know, he didn't have a great year, 4.52 ERA, 8-10 and 10 record, 163 hits and 140 innings, so not the best numbers. Um, he was a starter. Uh, for Chad Green, he was drafted by Detroit in 2013, and he spent his, his entire career in the Tigers organization. He played in Double A all of last year, and uh, though he had a 5 and 14 record last year, he had a decent 3.93 ERA, but still gave up way too many hits: 170 and 148.2 innings. Um, Cashman has gone on record in saying that both will start the season Triple A, but he's also said that. Uh, his in terms of deals, he's nowhere near done. So, Chad, can you give us your initial thought on that on this trade? Well, I kind of I mentioned it on the uh, on the BBB Twitter about like 30 minutes before it happened. I was like, Justin Wilson, there's some rumors that he's going to the Tigers, and obviously, I don't really have any I don't have any more knowledge as anybody else. But uh, I kind of expected him to get dealt. I just didn't. You know, you didn't know whether they were going to get prospects for him, whether they were going to get, like, an outfielder or an infielder. Mm -hmm. So that was more of the question with me is who were they going to get in return. And I think once I saw the return, I was, like, incredibly disappointed. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously uh, Sessa is the number six prospect in the Tigers, uh, in the Tigers farm. So that's – pretty high ranking until you consider their farm system as the 24th best in the major leagues. That's definitely on the lower end. So although he is the number six prospect on the team, I don't think I don't I, I doubt he's in the top 100. I'd have to check on that. And then Chad Green, he had a more solid year in triple or uh, not triple, just in the minor leagues in general. Uh, but he's still the number 19 team on that club. So overall, I think I think it's not a very good deal on the surface, but I think it definitely gives the Yankees more flexibility than they already had. Yeah, Phil, what about you? What's your initial thought? Yeah, um, I mean, when I saw, like, the rumors on Twitter that Wilson was probably going to be dealt to the Tigers, uh, you know, I think all of us were kind of thinking, who were they going to get back? Because, like, the Tigers hadn't really been thought of as, like, a logical trade partner for really anyone on the Yankees. But then we kind of talked about, like, ideas like J.D. Martinez or even Daniel Norris, but that even seemed kind of far-fetched. So the fact that all they got back was two young prospects is just kind of odd. Um, I mean, at first glance, I'm kind of with Chad. I don't really like the deal. But I do think that Cashman has something else working, um, as evident by Twitter, like all the reporters and stuff saying that he's not done yet. Uh, and I really think if Cashman wanted to get real value out of this deal, he would have packaged someone else along with Wilson to get – a bigger return from Detroit. So I definitely don't think he's done yet, but if that's all it is, if he's just going to get the two prospects and leave it as that, I really don't think it's that good of a trade. Yeah, I'm. my thinking is that if he wanted to make a package, though, he could have just waited for the third team to get involved and then just do it from there, do one trade. I'm not sure why he rushed in, in sending Wilson over already just because, you know, these two prospects – Aren't you know they aren't they're not major league level ready and they're not in the top 100. I just looked it up. They're not in the top 100. Neither of them in for all the minor league system. And I know that I read on Twitter earlier tonight that Detroit has one of the worst farm systems. So when when you consider that and the fact that neither of them are you know one or number one or number two in the Detroit farm system, it, it kind of shows you that like these guys 
aren't usually what you would expect um, in return for, for a middle reliever like Wilson, who is pretty reliable. Yeah. So I'm going to say with um, regard to Justin Wilson, uh, I would say at the start of the season, I was a big-time critic of him just because I knew we gave up we gave up Cervelli for him last year, and Cervelli was a good commodity. He was a yeah. useful commodity, but um, I thought that was a fantastic deal last offseason when we got Wilson and then kind of threw him into the seventh inning, and he took he took a little while to get going. So I I wasn't very happy with him at the beginning of the season. I preferred Shreve over him, but as the season progressed, you could see him uh, settling down into his role, and he he definitely emerged as Girardi's number three option out of the pen behind Miller and Batances. And I mean, Miller or uh, Girardi went to uh, Wilson in the eighth. He went to him in the seventh. He went to him in the sixth. I think he was very versatile. He could get out lefties and righties. So I think it's a it's a fantastic deal for the Tigers. You know, for a couple of years now, that's always been the Tigers' Achilles' heel is just their bullpen. So I think that them making strides to get a Justin Wilson will go a long way for them. And for the Yankees, I'm not really sure what the plan is right now, but uh, hopefully he's got something else in store. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to end up trading for more middle relievers. So in terms of the bullpen next year, you obviously have Batanzas and Miller in the back end. And, but in terms of getting from the average from our average starting rotation to those two guys, you have Chase and Shreve, who didn't perform too well at the end of last year, so I'm hoping he recovers. Yeah. And after that, it's just question marks. I mean, you have James, Pez- James Pazos um, and Jacob Lindgren. Lindgren went down the shoulder injury early when he came up last year, so we don't know what we're going to get out of him. Um Pazos is, you know, I think he came around last year. I, I've heard good things about him. I'm not too sure if need, either of you guys know more about him and, and his potential. Chad? Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll speak real quickly, and then I'll let Phil speak. Uh, I That was another one of my initial thoughts when I saw Wilson get traded. It kind of opens the door for Jacob Lindgren to kind of emerge as the, as the, you know, not star reliever, but as the solid reliever that they thought he could be last year. Probably rushed him to the big leagues a little bit, and he... He clearly wasn't wasn't himself. He wasn't ready, and and then it came out that he had a shoulder injury. So, kind of figured that out why he wasn't hitting his spots, why he was leaving pitches down the middle. But um, I think this is a great opportunity for Lindgren. I said it already. I think he starts the season on the major league roster, and now I think he definitely starts on the major league roster. And he he could you got to watch out for him because he could have a a pretty big role in 2016. So. Yeah, um, speaking of, you know, Justin Wilson's value, I think, you know, you're definitely right. He was the third man that um, Girardi really trusted behind Miller and Betances. I mean, considering, you know, how many relievers were up and down this year. Uh, and I think, you know, when I saw they were open to trading him, I was confused. I think, like, a lot of us were because, you know, we thought they would trade Miller. I mean, they still might, but Wilson just seems like one of the reliable arms in the pen that, you know, they wouldn't really be open to trading. But then again, it proves how Cashman really is open to anything this offseason, um, especially with a reliable guy like Wilson. Uh, and also, you know, I think, as you said, it's a good trade for Detroit because you're right, you know, the bullpen for them has been the downfall, you know, even in, like, the playoffs for them. So they're building that up now. You know, they they acquired K-Rod, I'm pretty sure, from the Brewers. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's odd uh, the Yankees got two prospects that no one really knows about. They're definitely not, you know, top 100 probably. Uh, but I think Cashman definitely should be working on something else. And if he's not, this trade definitely really is not in the Yankees' favor. Do you expect that these two players are flipped and they go somewhere else and we get either a big league, re- big league level ready outfielder or starting pitch in return? Or do you guys think that... These guys are here to stay, and then Cashman's just working on another deal just, just so the fans won't get too too anxious about this. Um, I think that if, out of the two prospects that they got from the Wilson trade, I think if they're going to trade one of them, it's going to be the uh, Sessa because he has more value. Even though he struggled at AAA, he still is the better performer, I think, out of the two. He's the higher-ranked one. But I think if Cashman's working on a deal now, I it almost has to be starting pitching. I really can't see him looking for outfield help. I mean... He could, obviously, since he's shying away from the free agents, try and sign or try and trade for an outfielder. But I think now that he kind of dealt away from the bullpen, I think he's definitely trying to lead more towards starting pitching. I mean, since, you know, he said he's not done yet, he could be making a big package, uh, including anyone, really. I mean, Ref Snyder, you know, considering the Castro trade, uh, 
Nova. No one has talked about him recently. And then, um, you know, that's really about it. I think he has to be going for starting pitching because that's kind of like the biggest need now. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Andrew Marsh and tweeted, uh, his tweet said something like Cashman said, quote, I'm not done yet. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of got a kick out of that. I thought it was kind of funny. It was almost like a dramatic Brian Cashman kind of keeping yeah. the fans on the edge of his seat, of their seats. But, um, you know, Phil mentioned it. I think Ref Snyder potentially we flip now, and we'll get to Castro in just a minute uh, and the implications of that deal. But um, I think Ref Snyder is definitely subject to be dealt. Uh, even Gary Sanchez, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, I yeah. know, I know he's. He's lo it's looking like he's going to be the backup for the major league team, but if you want to get him uh, some playing time, get him more polished, he, he could also start in AAA. You could go with, Ro with Romine as the backup and potentially either flip Sanchez and then, you know, Nova, possibly Pineda. I think the Yankees will get another starting pitcher. I, I really do, and I'm holding on to hope that they do because they, they really do have to, like, improve their rotation, I think. And so, I don't know. You know, these young guys, I think I think... Cashman actually does have more moves in, in mind when he made this trade. I don't think either one of the prospects he got tonight gets flipped. I think he kind of holds on to them because he did say he wanted more potentially major league ready uh, starting pitching depth. So I think these guys stay, but I think he's he's working on something else. Yeah, I just wanted to touch upon my article that I wrote yesterday in terms of an open letter to Cashman um, just to highlight our rotation. So the issue with our, issue with our rotation is that you know every single starter – Ones, and even ones that are going to stay for sure have an issue. So, you know, Tanaka with his elbow issue, I know he's in Japan right now, and, and I think that's going to be solved before spring training, which is good. You have Sabathia, who's still working on his personal health issues. Evaldi, who I think Chad and Chad and I, as well as all the BBB writers, have different opinions on what to do with Evaldi, which we can get into that later if we have time. But I think for the time being, he's definitely going to stay in the rotation. And then you have Nova Pineda, Severino, uh, sorry, yeah, Nova Pineda and Severino. Severino is definitely our, probably our most consistent pitcher, even though he's still young. And then I think most of us at the BBB agree that Nova and Pineda um, will, should be traded um, when they still have value. I think Pineda, ha Pineda holds the higher value. So, Chad, what do you think? As far as, uh, sorry, what was the starting it? pitching rotation go? As far as the Yankees rotation? Yes. Okay, so I guess since we're into this, I'll, I'll talk about Evaldi. Um, wasn't a big fan of Evaldi um, from the start, and then he kind of grew on me. You know, he, he, he's a guy who gives up a lot of hits. He's not going to strike out a lot of batters, but he's got, you know, you look at his stuff, and it's just incredible. And I think I always say it, and I think me and Scott, the co-founders here, I think we agree that um, Evaldi would probably be better suited in the bullpen. Mm -hmm. And even, and I mean, potentially he could fill in the Adam Warren's role of the six sixth seventh inning guy with a stretch like a stretch him out a little bit and then he can make spot starts and give you length out of the bullpen i think potentially that's something you got to look out for he could start in the bullpen i doubt it because he did have such a strong finish and he had a i don't even remember what his record was last year but he had like three losses so i mean he was yeah he i mean was three last year every time i tweeted something from the BBB account about how he wasn't getting batters out well people would just respond with well he's getting wins and you know but that's 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 hard to argue with because if if you're winning the game if you're winning ball games you're gonna put him out there so we'll see what happens there I think Nova's still subject to be traded I look at the Padres a team who definitely needs a starting pitcher yeah. and I don't know they're 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 trying to make up moves to kind of I don't know they're kind of backing off their strategy they had last year which was just like bye 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 they're trying to you know a little uh, but they're trying to I don't know what I'm yeah, Phil, do you want to talk about your opinion on the starting rotation right now, who you think should be dealt, and just your general gist of it? Yeah, um, I think the most obvious choice to uh, be dealt is Nova. Uh, that's the man that Cashman has really been preaching the whole time to be traded. Uh, I think he's probably still trying to sell him to other teams because you know his year last year was pretty awful coming back off of Tommy John. And I think that's a big point he's trying to sell to teams is that, you know, most pitchers when they come back from Tommy John, I mean, unless you're Jose Fernandez, like kick ass or are usually terrible when they come back from Tommy John. And Nova had it pretty bad last year. You know, his ERA skyrocketed. His record was bad. Just inconsistency in general. But 
there's really not a good spot for him in the rotation, I think. And that's why the Yankees are trying to trade for a starter, at least we think. And um, it just makes sense for Nova to go out of all of them. I mean, I think he could deal Pineda uh, if he can. Uh, it could probably get him a better return. But I think he'd rather deal Nova because, you know, he's the more consistent one out of the two, and there's really not a good spot for him. Okay, and back to what I was saying when I hit my in sync reference with the bye 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 with the Padres. Um, you know, that was their strategy last season with Kimbrell and, you know, bringing in all these guys. And I think I actually mentioned on my personal Twitter uh, that the Diamondbacks are kind of imploring that strategy, but the Diamondbacks are putting themselves in a better situation there. So I think the Padres definitely possible uh, destination for Ivan Nova. And again, with Ivaldi. He, like I said, he grew on me, so I, I can't give him heavy criticism, and I think he'll continue improving. And he, I mean, everybody's been talking about it, especially recently. Evaldi fits the perfect mold of what Cashman's doing with these young guys, with Castro, with Hicks, with Evaldi, with Ackley, these, these highly touted guys that either haven't reached their potential but have made it to the major leagues, and they're kind of waiting for them to break out. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, do you guys have any final thoughts before we move on and talk about the trade that happened last night with Starling Castro, Brendan Ryan, and Adam Warren? No, not really. All right, let's move on. So how about let's hear from Phil first on his take on that trade last night. Um, I love it. I think it was an awesome trade by Cashman. I really think that's the simplest way to put it. Uh, I mean, when you consider what he gave up to get Castro, he only gave up Adam Warren and Brendan Ryan. I mean, it's just crazy to think that he could actually get a team to get uh, Ryan, yeah. you know, Ryan and his salary of only like $1 million, I think. But uh, in all seriousness, I think it's awesome. I mean, Warren was a great piece for the Yankees. He, you know, he could have been the most versatile piece um, for pitching last year for the Yanks, you know, starting whenever they needed him to or, you know, being a reliable long man or a relief guy. But Getting Castro really solidifies the Yankees' second base uh, situation, and I would have been completely fine going into the season with the Ref Snyder Ackley combo because I'm a fan of Ref Snyder personally. Personally, I think that his bat is good, um, very good, and that his defense would just get better the more playing time he got. But obviously, the Yankees weren't comfortable heading into the off season having uh, that platoon there of Ackley and Ref Snyder. So I think. Cashman, you know, he finally got his guy because he said he went, he went after him at the uh, trade deadline. So seeing them get him now is pretty cool, I think, considering especially what you gave up to get him because two three years ago you would have to give up a lot more to get Castro because I think a lot of people forget how good he really is. I mean, he had a bad, for the most part, he had a bad season last year, but he really came on towards the end of the season. And I think it's, you know, I think it's a great move by Cashman, kind of sneaky, and it'll be a steal if Castro produces, you know, to what he's capable of. Okay, uh, with my thoughts on the trade, uh, I mentioned it in the uh, the rapid recap or rapid reaction that I wrote. Uh, sad to see Adam Warren go because everybody knows I'm partial to my Tar Heels. Obviously, I've got the uh, the Tar Heel sticker right there in my rooms, Carolina blue. But so so I've loved Adam Warren. Thought he was a great piece. I love Andrew Miller. I love Dustin Ackley. I love these guys. Um, and I think Adam Warren was a was a great piece. Kind of like. What I mentioned with Evaldi potentially filling his role of that sixth, seventh inning guy, he could mix and match, he could get out righties and lefties, he could start. Uh, so I think the Cubs are really gonna enjoy what they can get from Warren. I don't, I think Warren will have the same role in Chicago as he had in New York. So it's not like he, it's not like the Yankees gave up a dramatic amount to get Starling Castro. And like Phil mentioned, Castro was a guy. He's a three-time All Star, um, and as I mentioned again in my rapid reaction. He's a, he's a young, I mean, he's only 26. He's been in the league for like five years. He's a young middle infielder, which is a pretty hot commodity in today's game. And I think he's, he's a right-handed bat. That's definitely what the Yankees need uh, in this lefty-heavy lineup. So I think overall it, it's a great trade for both teams, and if you're a Yankee fan, you, you, you have to love it. Yeah, I I remember when we talked about potential trades for the Yankees, we never brought up Brendan Ryan's name because I don't think anyone at the BBB yeah. thought that anyone would take Brendan Ryan's contract, even though it wasn't it was, even though it was so cheap. So that's really really great news for the Yankees because the Yankees had a plethora of infielders, and if they brought in Castro without getting rid of Ryan, it would have been a logjam at second second base, third base, and short. So that's a good move on Cashman's part. In terms of Adam Warren, 
I, you know, he was a really good pitcher um, when he came in, I guess, in losing games, even though that's kind of a weird thing to say. I remember in August, he, like, didn't even give up. He gave up runs in only two out of his 12 outings, and he had a really solid 1.42 ERA. Um, but I'm kind of glad that he's gone out just because there was so much confusion on what to do. I know at the BBB, yeah. we tend to dis- to disagree on the usage of Warren. I know a lot of writers I want to advocate for him to start over Nova Pineda and even to them to Baldi. I thought he was. I thought that he was best served as as a long relief man, um, but it's. I don't think it's too big of a loss for him. So good, good move on Cashman's part. Um, um, and I, I like yeah. what I like what I like what Phil said about Brendan Ryan. I'm I'm absolutely shocked that the Yankees actually included him in a deal. Uh, when we kind of caught wind of the deal, it was it was uh, it was Adam Warren and a player to be named, which is just. We didn't know the player to be named, and then we heard. I heard it was Brendan Ryan, and I didn't even believe it. So yeah, I'm surprised that someone would take on a guy. I mean, he's he's so slick defensively, but I mean, my God, the dude can hit like 215, and he's not going to hit any home runs for the rest of his career. So <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think now we're going to transition to something else that I kind of wanted to get to earlier. Um, this is a piece that our other co-founder Scott Landry wrote about envisioning a trade for Jose Fernandez. And I know he's not here to uh, kind of vouch for himself, but I'll I'll put that up in just a second. But basically, he's going to bring in Jose Fernandez <clears throat> from Miami. And then, you know, everybody knows that the haul for Jose Fernandez, what the Marlins are asking for is just insane. Um, they asked for the Dodgers' top three guys, which was, you know, just insane to me. But here's... I'll read you guys Scott's proposal um, if I can find it. All right, hold on. Yeah, um, just just while you're finding it, I'm just going to chime in real quick. Andrew Marchand of ESPN, um, Yankees beat writer, I believe, um, actually did write an article, article about two days ago, which is when Scott released his article that the Yankees should make a deal for uh, Marlon Dreddy, Jose Fernandez. And to summarize his article, he said, the Yankees would definitely have to give up Aaron Judge and then Andrew Miller as well. Um, I definitely don't agree with that. But, I mean, I he did a Twitter poll, and he said he asked the public, um, over 4,000 people responded, he's like, would you include Aaron Judge as part of a deal for Jose Fernandez? And over 70% of people said yes. Um, Phil, let's get your opinion while Chad is looking for his article, um, what your thoughts were on Scott's article. Um, I honestly I agree with everything in it besides Greg Bird. I know people are gonna rag on me for not wanting to give up Greg Bird. People will say that you know I have like that weird like love for him, but I really think he's a such a valuable guy, and I think it does you know it doesn't serve him well that he's gonna spend an entire year in AAA. Uh, when Teixeira is up next year, obviously, and I'm not disputing the fact that Teixeira should be the starter, you know. He was putting up all-star numbers, like even MVP numbers, before he went down with injury. Yeah. But I think that you need to keep Bird because when Teixeira leaves next year, because you know he becomes a free agent, I think it's like the perfect scenario for the Yankees with Bird waiting there to become the first baseman. And yes, there are going to be a few free agent options, but Bird will be cheaper and younger. And honestly, he showed that he might just be as good in a full season, you know. And I'm not trying to overvalue him, but I just think it's what the Yankees are trying to stick to of being younger and staying younger and with players that are effective. And I think Bird fits the mold perfectly. And I think, really, the rest of his proposal is fine. You know, I'd be fine with giving up Sanchez, Pineda, Gardner, Mateo, Mitchell. I mean, Mateo and Sanchez are probably like the two that, you know, they're like part of like the big four prospects or big five or whatever. Um, that people wouldn't want to give up, but I mean, though they're really unproven. With Bird, at least you know he kind of has a taste for the major leagues. Um, but with Mateo, I mean, he's only, I mean, not only he's about three, four years away, so he's still got a lot of time. Uh, and Sanchez, you know, he was mashing in the Arizona Fall League, but you know, backup catchers are, you know, they're not hard to replace because they're backups. Uh, but, I mean, for the most part, I agree with uh, his proposal, but I think it would take more than that, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, considering, you know, what the Marlins were asking for from the Dodgers, they were asking for, you know, their top three prospects and more. So 
you have to imagine, or actually, the trade that the Diamondbacks made for Shelby Miller, uh, you know, the number one pick, and then two wow. really, the two really good guys. The report was that that wasn't even close to what the Marlins wanted. So that gives you an idea of how, or the price tag on Fernandez. And then after seeing that, I really don't think the Yankees could put together an actual offer for uh, Fernandez without, you know, completely blowing away the farm. All right. So in our uh... In our little group message, I'm getting some grief for not being prepared on having the uh, the full package ready, but here it is for those of you who don't know. It is that the Yankees would get Jose Fernandez, and Miami would get Gary Sanchez, Greg Bird, Michael Pineda, Brett Gardner, Jorge Mateo, and Brian Mitchell. And, you know, it is it is an incredible haul, but um, it, it's like Phil said, with the, with the Diamondbacks getting Shelby Miller... For the Braves, you know, they gave up the number one t- pick, uh, Dansby Swanson. They gave up Aaron Nola, uh, two huge prospects, and they said that wouldn't have even come close to getting Jose Fernandez. So we got a little bit of grief on our Twitter feed from uh, from followers that said, you know, this is just a ridiculous proposal. And although I'm I'm going to say that I don't agree with the proposal, I I do think that it's not even enough to get him, and that's why I think. Jose Fernandez, you just there's no point in going out and getting him because it's just going to cause severe holes in the Yankees roster, and it's just not worth it, in my opinion, for a guy who he needs to prove that he can throw 200 innings again before because he's coming off Tommy John before you give up all these prospects and uh, major league talent for him. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts before I move on to a final topic about Evaldi in the bullpen? Because that's something that I want to bring up before we end the podcast here. I don't really have any final thoughts. You can move on, Brian Peng. Okay, so you guys, we were talking about Evaldi pitching the bullpen. So over the last three years, I found a statistic on ESPN. It's that um, with his 16th through 30th pitches, um, he batters hit only 217 off of him. And we know that, obviously, as a pitcher, you know, for in terms of uh, for every outing, you know, batters tend to average about 300 off of him. So if we're going to put him in the bullpen, potentially him as a two two inning kind of guy, middle relief, he, he could potentially serve a pretty good role, kind of what Adam Warren did. Um, obviously, I'm not sure that will work out, but because of the fact that once he get through, gets through his first 15 pitches, which he allows batters to hit 297 off of him in the last three years, and last year batters hit 305 off of him, um, you know, once he gets through that, maybe he gets through the first inning into the second inning, um, pitches 16 through 30, batters only hit 203 off of him last year. So, that's something that could be looked into potentially if he struggles early on next season. But with the current rotation, if the Yankees don't add on to anybody, would you keep him or would you keep him in the rotation or would you take him out just because of what we have right now? Uh, Chad, do you want to go ahead? Uh, with what we have right now, he's probably going to slot into that number five spot in the rotation. You know, you're going to have – this is just – with what with what the Yankees have right now, it's probably going to be to knock on opening day and then probably Pineda and then Severino. And then it'll probably be CC just because of, you know, the contract. You know, hopefully he can resolve his issues that he's going through and then he can get back to form. You know, not not like his 2009 form, but hopefully he can become a serviceable pitcher again. You know, he showed he showed he still got it uh, towards the end of the season before he went to his reha- rehabilitation. Um, and then Ovaldi probably slots in his number five. And then people ask, you know, what do you do with Nova? Then Nova can be in the bullpen. I think Ovaldi was probably better than Nova would be in the bullpen just because Ivaldi has that power fastball and he's got that good split. So I think as a as a reliever, I think Ivaldi will be better, but I think the way it'll shape up is that if if Ivaldi and Nova are on the roster on opening day, I think Ivaldi makes the rotation and Nova doesn't. Yeah, Phil? Yeah, uh, I pretty much agree with everything Chad just said. Uh, I think if no moves were to be made the rotation, uh, you know, I think Ivaldi would definitely be in the rotation. Uh Cashman, you know, he didn't trade for him to be in the bullpen necessarily, but, you know, if Nova's traded, uh, then the Yankees would most likely get another starter back to take his spot. So chances are then Evaldi would be in the bullpen, and I think that's a good point that Chad brought up. You know, he throws very hard, and that is something that you look for in the bullpen arms, you know, that power arm coming out in, like, the later innings. Uh, But... Definitely the way the rotation stands now, there's really no way you can take Evaldi out of it. Uh, you know, I think last year he definitely showed a lot of improvement. Um, I mean, he still gave up a lot of hits, and he had a lot of run support. 
But, you know, Rothschild did show that he uh, helped him grow a little bit, kind of helped him become more of a pitcher, not really a thrower. But, uh, yeah, you know, he'd be in the rotation as it stands right now. But I think uh, they're definitely going to make a move for another starting pitcher before the season starts. Yeah, all right. So I think we've approached our half-an-hour time slot. Any final thoughts regarding um, anyone you'd like to see traded? Um, anything like that before we sign off? Um. <laughs> I'll just start off. I want to see the Yankees get a starting pitcher. Um, not really sure who. We've kind of talked about it. We've kind of uh, beat the nail into the hole. You know, it's just we've talked about Carrasco. We've talked about Salazar. We've talked about all these guys that I think the Yankees could target. I think they will get a starting pitcher. So I think, you know, what we just talked about with Evaldi, Nova, won't necessarily matter because I think Nova's going to be gone, and I think they will bring in a starting pitcher. Um, and then on, on the other hand, I'm very excited to get Starlin Castro. I said I was gonna get a, I was gonna get the jersey of a player that the Yankees signed this year. So I think I'm gonna once we figure out what number Castro is gonna wear, I'm gonna hop on it. I'm gonna get his jersey. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, um, I think that the Yankees definitely are gonna get a starter. If they don't, that's just a huge screw up by Brian Cashman. There's just way too many question marks, uncertainty in the rotation. Uh, I again, as Chad said, I don't know who it's gonna be. Cashman kind of has a way of grabbing people that you never really expect, like Evaldi last year. Um, but I think whatever he does, it'll be beneficial, whoever it is. Kind of, you know, like the kind of trend of his recent pickups, Young, haven't really lived up to their potential. And I think that he'll probably do it without giving up too much, but it would be nice to see him swing a bigger deal than he has in the past, you know, by a nice big package. <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> um, it'd be nice to, you know, have him put together some prospects for potentially a big pitcher like Carrasco or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, pitching's the biggest thing, and even a relief arm. And as Chad said, the Starling Castro acquisition is just awesome. All right, well, I'm not exactly sure where Brian went. Oh, no, sorry. Um, here. Um, we're, getting, yeah. we're getting – the reason we keep smiling is we're getting a lot of – we have a group message with everybody at the BBB, and we're getting a lot of grief from... We're getting a lot of heat oh my. From, from everybody, so... I don't know. I mean, we're the youngest We're the youngest people here, so we got to stick together. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just getting wet. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, we approached our half-an-hour time slot. Thank you, guys. Yours who joined in, probably all of them who are watching our, the people from the BBB. <laughs> All right, this is it. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll get you guys next time. Hopefully it'll be better. Hopefully we won't have all this background mess going on. Yeah. All, all right. right. Have a good night, thanks everyone. for tuning in. Have a good one.